David Bonson joins us here. He's in Chief Investment Officer at Bonson Group. Uh, they have about six and a half billion dollars assets under management. David, thanks so much for joining us here. Uh, you woke up, uh, you know, two weeks ago almost. Uh, we have a new president in the White House in, starting January. We're going to have a, a new Congress as well. Did that change your outlook, your investment outlook at all? Uh, it did not in the sense that the primary things that drive markets we felt were not going to move a ton, which is around the earnings profile, uh, earnings expectations, and the monetary policy. However, uh, within the weeds, it reinforced our optimism in the energy sector, which has certainly been very validated over the last couple of weeks, and uh, the financial sector. That was an area where we thought policy would make a difference and particularly some of President Trump's policies more favorable in those two sectors, and uh, Vice President Harris is less so. From the earnings perspective, you mentioned earnings um, obviously driving stocks here. We're just kind of finishing up with some of the retailers uh, this week. What is your view of the, of the earnings profile of this S&P 500 these days? I think that the earnings profile is obviously very good, and that the growth of earnings next year is very good, and that that is fully and completely priced in the market. And so the risk is really very little that earnings disappoint. I mean, that's always possible. There's always issues that could disrupt expectations. We happen to have a very, very good track record in our financial markets of being able to project earnings. However, uh, you're paying 22, 23 times next year's best case earnings right now. And so I find that problematic. So where else would you go then if that feels too expensive? We would not buy the entire index, especially where it's cap weighted, uh, especially where a lot of the big tech names that are big profit earners are trading at over 50 times. And in, if you're looking at trading earnings, they're trading at 70 or 80 times earnings. Therefore, you have to be more selective and we're more value biased at our firm and very dividend growth oriented. But some of the healthcare names, some of the financial names I mentioned, energy, you know, right now, if everything goes perfectly for MAG-7, it's about 21% of next year's earnings. It's 33% of the S&P. Financials are the only two sectors. Earnings projections are more than what they represent within the S&P. So we just recommend people be more bottom-up right now. All right. So within, let's say, uh, energy, for example, where in the energy space are you seeing opportunities? Uh, very, very heavily in midstream. And that's kind of interesting to say because it's had a heck of a year. And really since November of 2020, has had quite a great tear, but it was doing so from just decimated prices out of COVID. Now, not only have the pricing environment and the psychology and investor sentiment got better, but the fundamentals are dramatically better. Way less debt, way less leverage, way more cash flow coverage. And certainly right now, a policy, you can see from the new Secretary of Energy coming in, the Secretary of Interior, uh, there is a philosophical bend that is pro uh, our ability to get permits for new oil and gas pipeline and to export LNG. These two things are huge growth sectors. Yeah, meaning that you can actually put a shovel in the ground to build a pipeline maybe. That, that's right. And so what you have right now is a lot of value in the current pipelines because they're all we have. And then now you get the opportunity to build new pipelines, which I think uh, adds to the growth profile of the sector. So, Dave, how about in financials here? I mean, do you stick with the J.P. Morgan's Goldman Sachs is of the day or do you try to get a little bit more specialized? Well, so we own J.P. Morgan and have owned it since March of 2009, and it's one of the most profitable oh. investments we've ever made. And we uh, have had to tick down our weighting a little bit because it has just done so well, but we're not abandoning it. They're the cream of the crop, and there isn't another big bank we want to own. We also, own, as far as big commercial banks, Morgan Stanley is the name we own, not Goldman Sachs. They're actually both fantastic companies, great brands, great franchises. It's just the dividend growth. We think Ted Pick, the new CEO at Morgan Stanley, I joke he's the person in America mo second most passionate about dividend growth, I, I, with myself <laughs> being first. 
and and uh, we think Morgan Stanley's got a great fee-oriented business that's much less lumpy, much less deter, uh, you know dependent upon institutional securities and investment banking versus Goldman Sachs. They are, their wealth management and asset management are really annuitized at Morgan Stanley. Hey, D David, we really appreciate it. We always love your perspective on this. David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group.